want to create a circle. So I'm going to start the circle command here. And notice that right now it's set to diameter dimension. And notice that dimensions are appearing on the on the screen. So it's asking for the diameter dimension. And I can come in here and I can type in a value, let's say two, and I hit enter. Notice that SolidWorks is dimensioning it. But if I do the same thing again, and this time I'm not going to type in a dimension, I'm just going to pick. Notice in this case, it's not creating a dimension. So why is that? I'm going to go to the Tools drop down, and I'm going to go into the Options. And in the Options dialog box here, if I go to the Sketch tab, notice right here that I've got Enable on screen, Numeric Input, so that's why the dimensions are appearing. And notice here that it's creating dimensions only when a value is entered. So if I just wanted to create dimensions regardless if I enter a value or, or not, then obviously I could, I could take that dimension and take that off. Okay, well I'm going to start the smart dimension command here and, and notice that if I just click and click that it defaults to snapping to the centers of, of the circles. Also notice that as I, as I roll my cursor around here it's kind of moving between different options so horizontal, vertical, aligned um, and that's part of the smart dimensioning. Now notice that the cursor there, the little icon there, it's got a little blue on the right click menu. Now if this is the dimension that I want what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and what it's done now, it's now lock that dimension in place. So now what will happen is that I can move it to the desired location and place it without it bouncing back and forth between the different types. If I right click again, it, it removes that, so it allows me to, to change that again. Again, I right click and it locks that into place. Now this isn't actually the dimension that I, that I wanted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the, the shift key as I make my picks here. And as I make my picks here, notice I can actually dimension the tangent dimension or the parallel dimension in between and again notice that as I move my cursor around here I can flip between the different different styles here or let's start that again I'm going to hold on a shift let's pick towards the outside of the circle and again notice that it's now dimensioning to that tangent location on the outside so it's a matter of holding down the shift key to be able to change that and I can go from inside to outside if I want whoops I should actually start the command let's do that again let's actually start the dimension command so I'll hold down shift, I'll pick inside, outside, and we can see that it's creating that, that dimension for me. So the shift key there allows you to kind of toggle how you're, how you're um, dimensioning to your arcs and circles. Now speaking about, about arcs, let's actually create an arc here and let's see some of the options for, for creating arcs. So I'm actually going to locate an arc in between there. And what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to dimension the arc length. So I'm going to use my smart dimension command. I'm going to pick the two endpoints of the arc instead of the arc itself. And then I'm going to pick the arc. So again, maybe I went a little faster. What I did is I picked one endpoint. I picked the other endpoint. I picked the arc itself. Pick the arc itself. Let's try this again. Pick one endpoint. Pick the next endpoint. Pick the arc itself. And notice that I'm now getting the arc length. Now if I wanted the, the angle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick first point, I'm going to pick the center point, and then the end point, and now I'm getting the opening angle on that. So again, some different options there for dimensioning your arcs. Okay, well I'm actually going to delete this geometry, and I'm going to start the line. I'm just going to create a basic shape here. So I'm going to do something like this. All right, so I got my shape defined here, and I don't really want to go through and have to dimension it myself. So I'm going to go to my, my little drop down here, little panel here, and I'm going to use the fully defined sketch option. And I can either do the entire sketch or particular entity. So I could actually window and select some objects here. So if I was only interested about these objects here, I could actually just do the selected entities, click calculate, and notice that it's just dimensioning and applying relationships to those objects. Now let's actually pick the whole entire sketch here. Notice that relationships, I've got all of them enabled. So if I didn't want equals to be applied, I could disable that. And if I don't want concentrics, I'm going to disable that. And then from dimensions here, what I want is hor hor sorry, my horizontals, I want baseline. But my verticals here, I actually want chain. And I want them to be below and left of the sketch. So now I'm going to click Calculate. And notice how it's it's gone through and it's it's reapplied the dimensions because it changed the scheme. Um, the origin point is being my origin, and we can see how it's gone through and applied those dimensions and actually fully 
define the sketch. So a combination of relations and dimensions. Now I can see right now that it actually went to the center point of the base location. You know, maybe that's not what I want. So let's actually uh, cancel that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple key dimensions first. So I'm going to say that I wanted a, a dimension from, from there and let's make that three because I want that to kind of be an important dimension. And I'm going to add the radius here because I want that to be two. And I also want the overall width of this. So I'm going to apply a dimension to the overall width and I'm going to make that seven. So I've kind of applied the key dimensions that I want to have on this particular sketch. So now let's do a fully defined sketch again. Let's go with the entire object. Let's click calculate. And now we can see that it's changed up slightly how it's dimensioning my sketch. So again, to kind of make it a little bit more useful to kind of get, you know, better results is apply a couple dimensions, the ones that you think are the critical or the key dimensions, and then let the fully defined sketch take care of the rest of the work, the rest of the effort. Okay, now I'd like to come in here and I'd like to make some changes. So I'm gonna start my instant 2D option here. And the difference here, let's just turn that off, is that, let's apply these. If I come in here and pick this dimension, notice I'm getting this this way to modify it. But if I enable instant 2D, what I get is I just get a quick little text box. So I can say, let's make that 3.25 and notice how it's updated. So just a slight change there, but it's kind of quicker, less intrusive. You can just quickly make those changes. So notice when I take this dimension and I click and drag, so I'm gonna use this leader point here, I'm gonna click and drag, and notice how the ruler appears. Now the ruler actually works to snap the dimension. So I can snap on the small ticks, or I can move over and actually snap to the bigger ticks. So what I'd like this to be is I'd like this to be 4.5, I click and drag, and it snaps at exactly 4.5. So I'm not getting 4.499999, I am getting 4.5. So the advantage here is that when you're not quite sure where you want it, but yet you still want it constrained, is that I can click and drag with my Instant 2D enabled, and I can actually use these to get precise values on my click and drag. So there you have it, those are a few dimensioning um, tips while you're while you're sketching, um, you know, to kind of take away some of the heavy lifting and make it easier to work with your sketches.